What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right. Every week, me and my beautiful wife right here are bringing you guys tips, tricks, and things that will hopefully ignite, excite, and bring your relationship to a whole new healthy and positive level. Hopefully, long-lasting relationship will come out of it. And don't worry for all you guys and gals out there that aren't in a relationship. You guys can get all this great information and store it so you can find a great partner and then use this stuff to have a great long-lasting relationship with that partner. Maybe a family and all the good stuff that comes with it. But with good, there's always a little bit of bad, just a warning, so nobody is perfect out there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfect. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, you know, this week we're going to continue on. Last week we, we talked about three great relationship advice tips for you guys. So this week we're going to bring you three more. Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's Just talk about them. these things. All right, so the first one, I think this is really important. The little things add up to big things. And this is positive and negative things, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the little things adding up to big things, we're talking about the little things that you do daily, right? Because everybody you know, can go out or maybe they can't go out and buy you a new purse or car or whatever these things are. These are big purchases or things yep. that, you know, they might make your partner happy for a short term, but it's really the little things that they might remember. Right. The little things that might actually count more than the materialistic things. True. True statement. So when we talk about some of these things, we're talking about like, you know, picking your wife up or girlfriend up or fiance up from work. Right, going to lunch with them, maybe bringing them something at lunch, or uh, surprise it, them. Taking them out on a date, never know. Maybe going to a movie, doing something fun with each other, interacting. Because if you don't, you guys are basically just roommates. You guys go to work, you guys share bills, you guys come home, you guys eat, you sleep, and you guys do it again. Right? Um, this is where a little intimacy might help too, as well. Mm -hmm. If you're adding that into the mix, hopefully that will bring you guys together, not just emotionally but physically too, as well, because everybody needs that physical touch they want that physical touch they want emotional connection along with this mm -hmm. but with the little things you know I, I gave a great example to my son because you know mother's oh, day when it does come up i was talking to him about it he's like yeah I'll just give him 100 bucks because he wants to play baseball on that day right? yeah the tournament's right on actual mother's, mother's day, day. and is. i'm like hello that's my day <laughs> but then i was like well fine and it's supposed to be like a really big type of tournament for the baseball and the kids and they need enough kids to do it blah 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 yeah. and i told him about it and he's like all right mom i'll give you 100 i'm like i don't want your money right. he's like okay well, 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 well what else can i get you like well, I'll, I'll buy you some i'm like i don't actually you know what now that you said that i'm going to force you to think of something of a way to make it up to me that i'm going to be on the baseball field for all mother's day instead of uh, you know, some brunch or, or, beach. or the beach yeah. or maybe with the other moms because that's very typical that we do, right? This is true. So, you know, I, I really want him to think about it because, you know, they say that however you treat your mom is typically how you're going to treat your wife or this your girlfriend. True. And it's a true statement. So I want to make sure that he is groomed to be a good man to treat his wife well. Yep. So that way when she does bad things and I slap her a couple times, that it'll be, uh, it'll be totally, <laughs> totally within limits. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. So my conversation was, was saying, hey, listen, it's not about the money aspect. He's like, I don't know what to get. My mom has everything. I'm like, dude, it's not about buying the materialistic item. You know, I was getting to the conversation of what he can do. And I've told him this before over and over again. He always Write her a personal letter, like a Mother's yes. Day card. Write that card. And not a little piece right? of paper because he's been doing that. Well, anything, right? You can kind of get crafty get with it. Get crafty. You can, you can go online and it can tell you how to fold into a beautiful <laughs> car. A piece of paper, probably. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't put it past Google because you can learn anything <laughs> on Google, right? Yeah, so, and the, you know, make something like that. You know, come up with, you know, be, be something original. Maybe yeah, make a poem for your mom. Or let it come from the heart, you right? Know? Just thoughtful. something like that. Thoughtful. Yeah. Something thoughtful, something that, you know, you've worked and produced that didn't cost any money or was very little money that you could do. And at that point, you know, this will mean a lot to that person, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, your mom, right? On Mother's Day, if you guys are looking for something to do for your mom, hey, write her a card. I guarantee she's going to love it because it comes from your heart. And, it's, you it, and that's where you're saying, like, the little things that count. Yeah. Now, John here, um, me and John, we make a great team. The reason why we make this great team is that he's positive, right, all the time. And I am negative. I've gotten better. I'm negative all the time, right? So I'm the half empty girl and he's the half full guy, right? So in this situation, we're going to flip it. 
and we're going to say the little things, the small little things that might lead to bigger things, right? Mm -hmm. And this might be little nitpick things around the house, right? Like, or it could be anything, right? Maybe it's something that you constantly tell your partner, like, can you please not do this? Like, this is, it's irritating me if you do this, whether it's an action or maybe it's something that like, for instance, let's say the toilet paper, right? Does it go this way or does it go the other way, right? And then you go in there and you're like, okay, this is not the way it goes. Or, you know, it could, it could be something so minimal and it just kind of like feeds into it because you're not listening to when they tell you like, hey, can you put it this way? Or, hey, can you uh, not stuff the fridge with all of your shakes? Because I need to put my, my other drink in there or whatever. It could be the smallest things that you guys don't realize that you're doing that like might eventually end up into leading to an argument or being irritable about something. So just be like, listen, listen to what they're telling you. And the other person needs a voice. If something is bothering you, like share it. I think she had just covered my second topic. Uh oh. Listen and shut up. <laughs> listen and shut listen. up. It's, it's pretty simple and easy what she's talking about. <laughs> you know, you guys are in a relationship, you're in your own habits, right? And you're doing what your routine is, and they're doing what their routine is, and now you guys are kind of mixing it together, mm -hmm. right? So you guys are you're coming together, routine. you're meshing it, it's like mm -hmm. a hybrid situation. Hybrid. You know, with, with hybrids come compromise, right? And this is where the listening comes into play. Because you're only talking and telling them what you're doing and they're not listening to what they want. And now compromise brings you both to having to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. So listening goes a long way. And I tell my son this every day, I'm like, shut your mouth, listen. Yeah. And then make a comment after you understand what's going on. Yeah, it's a different from like hearing someone talk versus listening. Listening means that you're like processing what they're saying. Yes. Because you could just, you could be like looking at them and not really actually be like processing what they're saying they're just talking in thin air and, and all of you would be lying to yourselves if you said you've never done this yeah. whether it's with your mom your girlfriend you know your whatever tell me the zone out the zone out the zone you're just, out you're giving them you're not even you might have even perfected it where you've taken the dumb look off your face and you actually look like you might be listening yep. so you need to listen um or you, it could end up in in a bad situation yeah yeah especially <laughs> if they catch you so make sure that you got your, your uh -huh. repeat on blast. Yep. All the time, I would be doing two different things and Sharice like, you're not listening to me. What did I just say? What did I just say? And then I'm just coming and I tell her exactly what it was. Because I, I was listening to every her. Every once in a while though. I was listening. He, he, he leaves off that last little bit and I'm like, oh, okay, well, what about this part? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 you weren't listening to that part. Oh my God. <laughs> make sure you listen. They'll try yeah, to catch you up yeah. on Call it. Out. Don't get don't get caught up in that yeah, situation. Yeah, call you out. Because that's just another strike going against you. Yeah, right there. strike, and it's not like <laughs> bowling where it's good. <laughs> but you, you should definitely listen because you know it's important, and you might miss something, right? And this comes into play about doing the little things too, as well. They might hint at those little things in a conversation with you. They might not say this is what it's exactly about, mm. but you take that information, and you store it, and then you use it for later. Because there might be something in there that like it might be like, I don't know, uh, like strawberry shortcake or nerds or candy or, or, or anything that might a special flower it might not be rose it might be something totally different yeah. and you can use that later on like hey you know you get them like, oh my god yeah i i can't believe you remembered this right, right. and and you've listened you've listened to what they said and you applied it to go forward so at this point make sure you guys are listening guys and girls and i'm sure you guys have all been in the situation even on the phone when you're talking to somebody, whether it's a salesperson or anybody else, you're talking, they're talking, asking you a question, then they talk, and you're trying to talk over them, and nobody's listening to you. That here, is so annoying. Right? That is annoying. Yeah. Don't let it happen to your relationship because it happens. Yeah, yeah, it's so annoying. It happens. Two uh, people cannot talk at the same time. Yeah. So if you guys are both talking at the same time, you guys are not listening. Neither one of you guys is listening because yes. you're both talking at the same time, and you guys are literally not getting anything accomplished because you're both talking. Yep, yep, yep. So my third topic, or our third topic, mm. a healthy relationship requires two healthy individuals. So at that point, um, you know, Sharice was kind of asking me, like, you know, what, what do you think about this before this, this segment? And what does that mean? Th this means this, right? That don't rely on your partner to make you happy, right? They can make you happy with things they do or being around them and all these things. But if you're not happy with yourself going to a relationship, don't look to that person to be the happy pill every single day. Yeah. It's not gonna happen, right? And you deserve to, to give them happiness as well. So if you're just draining happiness out of them mm. and not reciprocating this, 
this can set up the relationship to have negative things that go on. Um, and then you're always going to be looking to your partner to make you happy, per se, right? Mm -hmm. and you don't want that. Like, you you want to be a happy person. And at that point, when you're doing these things in a relationship, you're making your partner happy. And then you guys are coming together, two happy individuals, making each other even happier. And hopefully having a happy life, right? <laughs> to, to, to a certain extent. Yeah, happy it's, wife is a happy life. Happy wife is a happy life. <laughs> but they might not be your wife. Yeah, happy right? girlfriend's a happy and life. You, you know, you might not be happy in the current situation scenario you're in, right? And you go out. And you find this person that's just really bubbly. They have this aura about them. They bring this positive vibe around you. And that makes you happy at that point. You're like, man, like I feel better about myself. Or this person really makes me feel better about myself. They might compliment you or whatever it may be. Um, you might feel good. Like, hey, this person wants to go out with me. I'm like, oh, man, like, cool. This is, this is awesome. Things are starting to work out for me, right? <laughs> you um, got to remember, too. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, listen, I highly rely on John to make me happy every hour of the day. Oh, man. Um, and he's done a really good job at it, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, try, it, works, it works out, it works out. However, there is one like little balance that I'll share with you guys and it's a secret, right? So here's the balance, right? So say that your partner, cause not everybody has a good day, right? Sometimes you're gonna have a bad day and you might just wake up in a bad mood. I don't know, it's just things happen. It just, it happens, right? Tell me how many people haven't woke up in a bad mood. What do you think? You wake up in a good mood every day. So if your partner is in a bad mood, this is the day that you need to be in an extra good mood yep. to kind of offset your partner's bad mood and try to get them in a better mood if yep. you can. You know, if not, then it is what it is. But two bad moods in one room doesn't work out very good. Definitely not. So if you and, and listen, you can't be in a bad mood every day either because now you're now the now you're top heavy yep. on the one person being in a bad mood all the time and you're forcing yourself to have to be in an extra good mood so that this person is in a good mood. Yep. But if you realize your partner's in a bad mood you can't also be in a bad mood so if something is irritating you you might have to like kind of put it to the side for that day or whatever it might be and just even each other out and I've come to do that with John John is very seldomly in a bad mood yeah. but if he is in a bad mood or seems a little irritable I try to just kind of just watch out <laughs> you know maybe I'll give him a couple scratches or something and then he calms <laughs> down you know so but it's you gotta you gotta recognize it I guess yeah. is you have to know what's going on and realize it so these are great advice tips just for you guys three more so next week an even better show join us every Sunday 11 a.m. on ABC and if you guys don't get to watch it live you guys can DVR it or go right over to YouTube subscribe hit the all notification bell and watch Cupid's Corner and all our great Titan content coming at you guys so we'll see you guys next Sunday 11 a.m. on ABC see you then <laughs>